for me, coming back on country, it's it's uh, it's exploring and, and going walking where the old fellas walked before on our country, uh, on Nyampa Wongai Bong country. And for me, it's I'm glad to be back on country, and I want everyone else to enjoy that walk with us. Welcome to country, my country. I was told by, by one of my old bosses once that he'd known about these two rock holes at a certain place <coughs> and getting out there and walking around with an elder, it was just an absolute wonderful place to be. Um, we climbed up on top of this big granite boulders that was like a mountain. I knew we was in for something that was very, very important and very significant for us because my mob lived and, and, and made the fires and kept chipping away, kept chipping away, make a fire, chip forming the, 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 mold, the bold sort of shape in there. and They light a fire on it, and you know if you light a fire on rock and cool it very quickly, it'll crack. So then they just use the sticks and stones that they had to chip away, and I reckon it must have taken years to get them down to three to four foot. You could see on top of that hill that this was a special place. I think it's a it's a path through, you know, like when you go from, uh, say, Byrock to Burke, and it's like that, but it has more significance than just passing through. Um, obviously, there'll be a ceremony to. Uh, uh, to the country or to this particular place, being a special place, there'd be some type of ceremony. And that wouldn't just be because uh, there was something that they've done, it's something that they'd want to do uh, to honour honor what this place really means for them. We're in Western New South Wales. This can be a very arid country, you know, and just about every creek around these areas are called Sandy Creek. And uh, no matter where you go, in Western New South Wales, you're gonna find a Sandy Creek. And let's not call that for no reason. They are sandy. There's not much water. So that is why to preserve water in most arid parts of Australia, you'll find these wells that were dug by Aboriginal people. And uh, just they just form part of life. And without the water, a lot of things wouldn't be able to survive. So, you know, um, by having these wells dug by our people thousands of years ago, um, have helped preserve a lot of, a lot of Australia's culture and, uh, and birds and animals and people. They can't live without water, it's like they're fish in the water, they can't live without it. Um, water is, is giver of life, uh, without that we'd all, we'd all die. And so hence their, their, path, their pathway is from the Mulga Creek, which would have been their highway and the Ander Creek. They're the highways of uh, getting across country. And no doubt they would have found the shortest route and in that they would have planned their, their trip to wherever they were going. And mostly it would have been places like um, the Bogan River, which is also a part of their camp, it would have been down to the Brewarrina fish traps. Uh, and so it would have been that, that, that place where they would have travelled. And... This is some of their walking trails where they know where the water is so they can walk and uh, 
and uh, gather food and watch them and, and also in these rock holes and that they they walking down from Gundabooker and and uh, coming through the, the the walking trails when they go down the down the, down southern to the Lachlan River or the or, or Willandra Creek for ceremonies or, or corroborees. My uncle that took me out there to show me where this where this hole was, he told me he said there's a about 500 metres away, he said, uh, heading north. He said there was a rock formation, he said, three quarters of a circle, but it had a gap in one end. He said, I just couldn't work out what that was. And I said, well, I can tell you what it is. You stand in the middle of that, that circle of rocks and look out through that gap, that points you straight to this water hole. See, circles, and semicircles was identifier for water. So uh, I've actually seen them um, on cave walls, a circle. And if you stand in that cave with your head, back of your head, up against that circle and look straight out, that's pointing you to a water hole as well. So. Yeah, so uh, when, we, when we come to talk about uh, our our camp well, our Gorobwa, you know, there would be, uh, there would be a, 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 obviously a law or a process that we'd have to follow in regards to moving across the land. And, um, and it's not a law uh, to keep us in a boundary, um, it's a law to keep us safe. And so there would be markers for that type of stuff, like scar trees or carved trees or whatever you want to call it, or maybe um, archaeological stuff, if that's a word to use, uh, they would have those type of things in place. They would know where the water would be if there wasn't any water. My father told me they, they used to walk, they used to mark trees, and uh, they marked trees for a lot of things, boundaries and things like that, but uh, they also they also marked them for water, so you just had to know what the symbol was and yeah, you'd find water. Most of the uh, native wells that are dug by Aboriginal people, they always had a cover on them. It's just helping preserve the water from evaporating and they're fairly solid. The rocks, you know, they could be this round, three to four inches thick. So, you know, it's pretty heavy. And uh, yeah, I've seen them on quite a few, but uh, there's a lot now that we've, we're finding that you can see the rocks being, the plates being smashed up or being broken from stock. So, if you do see one, let us know, and uh, we can put it back where it belongs. So, yeah, it'll be great.